number of the units that hit the beach was uh, the big red one. Um, also, there was uh, Ranger units hitting the beach, 9th Infantry. Uh, also, the, the 45th Infantry Division called the Thunderbirds, very prevalent during the, the Italian campaign. Like I said, what they're doing right now, they're circling. And this is what they did. This was a procedure. What you would see out there, other than those boats circling, there would be a lot of, uh, there would be battleships, cruisers, destroyers. And what they would do, they would soften up the beach. There would be a pre, what's called a pre-landing bombardment. And uh, you, you'll see a little bit of that today, too. Also, with uh, after the pre-naval bombardment, there would be, uh, the Army Air Corps would come in with their planes and they would strafe the, uh, they'll be shooting at the aircraft as they come over. Right now you see uh, flying over is a uh, B-17 bomber as one of the primary bombers, heavy bombers during World War II. Is there a bomber? Here the bombers are coming around for a second pass. What you're going to see is, it is uh, like a bombardment. So we got two AT-6s coming in. Looks like one of them's taking a hit. You see the smoke trailing? Yeah, that's all, Michael. What you see right there, they're strafing the, those are machine gun bursts. Those would be 50 caliber machine gun bursts. As you can see, the Italians are uh, getting in position to repel the beach landing. As you can see right here, right just in front of you are, are the British 8th Army disembarking from the duck. And the Americans are on the left flank, the British are on the right flank. Americans are taking up beach, beach positions on the beach behind the wall or the sand, sand berm. What we have out here are a number of different weapons. The Americans are work, using the M1 Garand. It's an eight-shot, eight clip-fed, semi-automatic rifle. General Patton said that was the best implement of during, during World War II. That's a standard issue for an American GI. Uh, the British would be using bolt-action rifles to be the infield. Also, they use a, what's also called a brain gun for their uh, heavy machine gun. And also, uh, you can see some of the British are coming in with uh, a mortar. Also, what the, the Americans would use, other standard weapons for the American uh, infantrymen, would be the M1 carbine. It's a 15-clip uh, semi-automatic weapon. Uh, a lot of the officers use those, or they use those in the rear echelon. Uh, the other thing, weapon that uh, the Americans used during World War II was a Thompson submachine gun. Those uh, obstacles out there are called hedgehogs. Those were more prevalent in uh, the beach landings of Normandy than in the, uh, the Italian campaign. Moving up to the second berm. As I said before, uh, you see a uh, British mortar go off. They would use this in support of the troops. Also, there, there would be uh, heavy machine guns or light machine guns on the on the beach for the USGIs. 30 caliber M1919 machine gun that would shoot 1,100 rounds per minute.
see the Italians retreating over the hill. The Americans and the British moving up to take positions that the, the Italians had, had vacated. Yes. Also, another gun that the British would use was called a Sten gun. It was a full automatic machine gun that they would use, very versatile. The gentleman on the sand berm right there, that's what he's carrying. He's got a, what's called a Sten gun. Some of the German weapons that uh, you'll see here, uh, the basic weapon for the Germans is called a K-98. It's a five-shot, clip-fit, bolt-action rifle. That was the mainstay of the German army during World War II. Also, uh, the Germans employed uh, what's called the boot gun or the Smizer. That's their 30-shot, uh, clip machine gun that they used. You'll see a number of the German troops will have those. Also during World War II, toward the middle of World War II, during the uh, last part of 1944 and the first part of 45, uh, the Germans came out with a few more weapons. One of them was called the Sturmschwerer 44. Uh, it wasn't used in Sicily or Italy, but it was mainly used uh, toward the end of the war in, uh, in the European campaign. It was the first actual assault weapon ever made. It had a curved uh, magazine, and, and it shot nine... Uh, it was... Uh, 30, cl 30 shot clip two. It was also used uh, in, in the Russian campaign. So you can see now the Germans are advancing and retaking their positions that uh, the Americans had previously pushed them back. The Americans are retreating back to the first, first position. The British are also retreating back to their first position with a lot of casualties. The second wave's coming in. They're going to disembark and reinforce the first wave. There you can see the British mortar going off again. Actually, the Germans had mortars too. Another mortar pit over there to the, on the right side of the beach. You see the other landing craft coming in, laying down a barrage with their 50 caliber machine guns as cover fire for the landing craft. And then the second wave will be currently disembarking to re reinforce the first. German howitzers going off. There's a few uh, artillery pieces behind that berm right there that the Germans are employing against the, the Allies. Now the, now the second wave is disembarking to reinfor reinforce the first. Up the, the, on the right side of Sicily and uh, Patton one on the, the left side. Um, also, Patton, the one thing that Patton did during, uh, during this campaign, he was not supposed to take Palermo and uh, kind of like disobeyed orders and went on ahead and took Palermo. But the real prize during uh, the Sicily campaign was uh, Messina. And that would be the last uh, battle on the the island of Sicily before uh, the American troops would uh, uh, start their uh, invasion of the Italian, Italian mainland. As you can see here, a few uh, German potato mashers are being thrown, and that's what the Germans would use. Those are called potato mashers, or those are their hand grenades, where the Americans and the British would have uh, the fragmentation grenades would look for they would call them pineapples. They'd pull the pin, throw it, and have five seconds before it would explode. As you can see, the Italians now are retreating back themselves. Now 
the Germans are starting to surrender and give up some of their forward positions. But the Germans still command the high, high ground up on top of the hill. And that was to their advantage. They could see pretty much what's going on on the, on the flats on the beach there. They're taking the, the, the first gun position. The Germans are surrendering. What they will do, the, the Americans will come up here and they'll uh, frisk down the Germans and make sure they don't have any weapons on them. They'll take their grenades away from them, any pistols, knives, uh, anything else that they think that might uh, give them a chance to uh, do harm to the, uh, the American troops there, taking them prisoner. See right there on the, the landing craft, he's firing a 50 caliber machine gun. Uh, that's a standard uh, type of gun they would use on a landing craft. That's also the same type of, uh, would it be a short barreled 50 caliber machine gun that they would use uh, in the fighter planes. Uh, very, very devastating as far as uh, uh, firepower. The Sherman tank, uh, a lot of the tankers would use that 50 caliber to uh, rake uh, buildings and gun positions other than their uh, 75 millimeter on the, the main gun of the Sherman. As you can see, some of the Americans are taking their German prisoners back behind the first, first wall. The British have also captured some too. They'll take them down to the beach. The Americans have uh, taken the hill and uh, taken the beach and won the day with all the Italians and the Germans giving up. <laughs> if you will, uh, also, after, like I said, after this, uh, after the beach landings, come back to uh, the airport and uh, there'll be airplanes there, a lot of living hi history demonstrations. There also will be, this afternoon, there will be a, uh, a battle at the, at the airport and there will be a battle tomorrow at the airport. Uh, please come back and see all these guys. These guys work really hard to research all their uniforms, all the weapons. They research the history. Uh, but the, the number one thing is, as a reenactor myself and everybody out here on the beach, uh, we're not really out here glorifying war. What we're, what we're doing is we're paying homage to the veterans of uh, World War II, America's greatest generation. If you get a chance to meet a veteran today, if you can, please walk up to him and shake his hand and thank him for his service and thank him for our freedom, which is so fragile today.